Hey, this is Captain Conversations, a weekly podcast here at Woodlands. Well, it's a bi-weekly. It's every other week. Hey, um, I just took one when, week off. When Dave. Whitney's going on vacation. <laughs> so I'm Dave Bondes here with co-host Whitney Swenson. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Dave. You had a week off. I did. And you're feeling good. Rejuvenated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Refreshed. you you went you went to where? I stayed home. Oh, home. Okay. <laughs> it was a pretty no, normal I, week I, for the rest you of my family. Went to Bancroft. <laughs> I went to Bancroft and stayed there as much as I could. Yeah. Uh, no, pretty normal week for my family. Like, and so it felt. I feel refreshed. Yeah. It was not vacation by any means. It's a it was staycation. Still, well, even like getting Sophie off off to school, sure. and then we had something every night. Mm. And so it was essentially my my time off was six hours between getting her gone and then going going to get her but it it was regular life just kind of trying to segment off thinking about the ministry and running that sort of stuff right i took off and i was like oh wait i'm a mom Uh, and we live on a homestead (laughs) 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 and we're kind of farmers so there's kind of farmers you know there's like vacation is complicated stuff to do here but it's stuff that i like to do and and enjoy and it's refreshing to me so that's great good that's great well it's also very rainy so i got to do a lot of reading that's great. Curl up by the fire. It was good. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, guess- except it was hot. Oh. It was 60 degrees, oh, 65 yeah. degrees. So that was it, it did start the fire on Monday night. And Brian was like, what are you doing? It's going to be like 70 degrees over Well, last week was really nice, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It was, so. I mean, warm, but rainy. Yeah. It was weird. Trying Could have process. been snow. That's the what I hang my head Will on. be snow this week. So. Yeah. You yep. know I'm up for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, our guest this week is none other than Jamie Sheriff. Hello. Jamie, Sheriff. we are incredibly excited to have you back on. Love to um, be here all the time. Legacy guest. That's how <laughs> that's we're gonna. It. Oh, that's our, the name here. Le- legacy. So, um, <laughs> we used to call them holy, holy guest, holy. Yep. Holy guests, yeah. just holy guests. Yeah, mm-hmm. the set apart one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, wow, so you are a legacy holy guest. Don't get your a holy hopes legacy up, guest. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> a holy legacy guest. We're we're here for it. So, mm-hmm. um, we're really excited uh, mm-hmm. to have you join us as we kind of yeah. continue to talk about this. Um, so our, our uh, most recent segment. We have a segment. We have segments okay. here. So the segment we're going to jump into right now. We'll put you on the hot seat. Hot seat is called oh. Morning Beautiful. Okay. So um, <laughs> where we just ask our guests. Um, about morning routines, and mm-hmm. this is okay. this is an area that I think um, I'm just really excited to get your insight in, because I I think that you're just a very very disciplined person in a good way. So yeah, I, I look up to that <laughs> in you. So I, I respect that about you, um, how thoughtful you are in in how you handle parts of your life. And yeah, so um, the question is, what is a morning routine that you have that has been life giving, and or what's a morning routine that you'd like to tweak or adjust? To make it more so. Sure. So kind of pretty open-ended in that, but just yeah. morning routine questions. And to okay. give you more time to think. The reason it's called morning beautiful is because Dave's morning actually begins in the evening. Oh, yes. With a mug of tea that is stolen from his wife. The mug is his wife's. So okay. It says morning beautiful on it. Mm. So to be totally transparent <laughs> about that whole thing, that made it sound way more like intentional. <laughs> and like my morning begins in the evening. Yeah, that's, and it should, right? Yeah. Like that's it, a great rhythm. That's my go-to um, routine so. too. Is, uh, it starts the night before. <laughs> yeah. But we got this mug. We I was also just talking to our incredible communications team, Hannah and Leanna. Yeah. Um, and we are we are going to be putting out a church store sooner than than later. Oh We're working okay. with a third party company to put out some church merch. Um, if you want to, uh, yeah, it's church merch, uh, <laughs> bumper stick, not a bumper sticker, but stickers or shirts, sweatshirts, swag. different things like that. Swag, some mugs. swag, some, yeah. And mugs. And I was like, we should do a cabin conversation mug. And they were like hundred percent. So like with some Buffalo plaid or something in it. Or, I, or there wasn't it, a lot of different okay. options okay. for what the mugs were, Okay. but I think we're going to get a camp mug that says oh, morning beautiful cool. on it or yeah, cabin conversation. That. So yeah, we'll, we'll so keep good. you in the loop on that dear <laughs> sure, listener. Some, some listener voting on that maybe or something. Yeah, that'd be a ton you of know, fun. Can we put them out here? And, too? Cabin, yeah. conversations. Cabin conversation stickers. Boy, put it on the coffee this, mug. That can go on your so mug. You don't have to buy a new mug. An you can awesome just idea. buy a sticker. Mm-hmm. So church merch. Um, <laughs> it's coming. Swag. Woodland mm-hmm. swag. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Cool. Anyway, so there, there you go. That's the lead into the the segment. Okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, I was telling Whitney, I, I don't think my morning routines are really helpful to anyone because... <laughs> I don't have children that are knocking on my door, and I'm largely in charge of my own schedule. So then they get to be aspirational goals. <laughs> <Okay>. for, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I love a cup of tea in the morning. I love drinking something warm. Um, see? I, Did you see that, what she just equated the two things with? Tea warm, and warm and tea. Yeah, those that was not... Uh, <laughs> carry on. Okay. So. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Whitney, like Whitney's mildly <laughs> delusional when it comes to the definition of teas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> honey, I do honey and lemon water. Oh. And they have... I've been just disgraced in, in you no, know, thinking it's that delicious that hot tea. water. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, this is not delicious. I just drink so. it because it's warm. But anyway, yeah. oh, um, oh boy, <laughs> do a lot of reading. Um, reading, I I journal a fair deal. Um, yeah, I've been lately. I've been really liking Andrew Murray's Abiding in Christ. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's been really good. I don't know how that can be daily because yeah. you just have to think about it for a few days after you read one of the little mm-hmm. entry things. Um, but then completely unrelated, I have been liking the um, New York Times Connections game. <laughs> they give what you si- is this game? They give you 16 words, and you have to come up with the four groupings that they hmm. have. And so it seems easy until five of the words are the different senses, but only four of them are Can a part of together. the group. <sighs> and so you have to figure out which one... A- applies to another grouping of three. Sure. So um, some of the recent ones have been um, NHL hockey teams or WNBA teams. Oh, no. Um, things with trunks. <laughs> I don't know those oh, things. Oh, dear. <laughs> you know, and so, I mean, if you... Yeah. Things well, with alive, trunks. Would it be like a car and an elephant? Yes, like that those situation? are two of them. Okay. And that's the connection that I made. And then I was like, what other things have trunks? Okay. Swimmers and trees. Okay. And so yeah. I was able to make the four, the connections. Yeah. Wow. So you don't need to know all of them, but if mm-hmm. you can get like a couple of the groups, then it kind of whittles down. It's kind of like a crossword. Kind of like, like a crossword. It gets easier in theory. It does. Yeah. Is so, this an app or is this, how I do you, just go how do you access this? to the New York Times website and it's okay. like, it's like Wordle or, you sure. know, I mean, it's a all daily game. All their tied game. in games. Yep. So it's less than five minutes and it just kind of gets my mind like, Making connections. Thinking about things. You have a warm up. I have a little warm up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I think they give you like four tries. And if, like, if you make four mistakes, then they're like, uh, oh, better luck next time. And then oh. they just tell you the answers. Okay. Oh. So, and it's a daily thing. It's a daily so thing. So it's once a day. It's you once get the, a day. Yeah. Game, yeah. So. It's not like I'm sitting there for six hours making connections. So. <laughs> do you still do Wordle? I do still do Wordle. Okay. Yep. But I, that's not as often i mean i try and do it but it's not as regular as the connections has become my so. daughter and i completely fell off on the wordle train mm-hmm. so i haven't I never done wordle it. in a long time yeah. so mm-hmm. you're probably not worse for it but i, I mean it's <laughs> interesting so yeah those, those little games they're fun they're, yeah especially if it's like a confined amount of time yeah. and yeah, the blessing of all the one. new york times word games is that there's a game a day right and you're done I think they might say, you know, subscribe and get unlimited. And I was like, I don't need don't that need in my to. life. You know, like I'm good with one. Mm-hmm. So. I'm a subscriber to the digital one. And I don't think I could get unlimited. Oh, um, well, maybe that's not true. I but again, know, I but haven't it's... played a lot. So, and I bet different games are different ways. Yeah. The um, only way to make this better is if you got all the guesses wrong and then they didn't give you the answer. And they're right. just like, better luck next time. <laughs> think a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> Failure. <laughs> It's just, yeah. Come it does. So week. it tells you if you guess three, four, and you're one away, it'll say one away. Oh. And then you got to try and figure out which one is the wrong one. Sure. But if you're two off, they're like, try again. You have no idea what you Yeah. Mean. You have no idea. Yeah. Do you, so. do you tend to complete all of them for the most part? You're, you're I would fairly say, successful. Yeah. Maybe once a, once or twice a week, I get a better luck ne- next time. Okay. <laughs> um, so, but it's very rare that I would get all four right in a row. I mean, there's normally, I need to use a guess or two. Oh, he's playing it now. I'm no, not going to give away I'm writing, I'm writing in the show notes and remind me of the name of the game. It's called Connections. Connections. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, so. Um, and I'm interested, uh, dear <laughs> listeners, in whether or not you play kind of daily warm-up games yeah. or mind games or things like that. Um, mm-hmm. Can anything. I get your mind rolling mm-hmm. for the it, morning? I've tended to do Wordle in the evening. And so oh. this is a nice thought of kind of in, integrating it into a morning routine. Yeah. Um, even with thinking about Eden, uh, she's up, she's up at six, you know, she's up at the kind of the same time I am mm-hmm. and we do different morning things. Um, and then breakfast is kind of connected again. So kind of doing that over breakfast would be kind of fun. Yeah. And so that could be a nice little yeah. That would treat. be interesting to do with your kids to see what yeah. connections they make that you don't see. Yeah. That could be kind of fun. Yeah. It also creates a tension when you know you only have four tries <laughs> and they're like, this <laughs> is a connection. Me. And you're like, I'm sure that's not a connection. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Try it to find a better guess. Or, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I like it because by the time I'm done, then my tea is normally ready to drink. It's like cooled down enough sure. and steeped enough. So that's kind of my like little timer, if you will. It's sure. Okay. So room. overall practical question about uh, morning routines. This, this sounds like you, Pour your hot water uh-huh. and you sit down. Yeah. And then you pull out your phone and yeah. do this. <laughs> and then you segue into 
how have you separate? If I was doing that, I am just so such a loser with my digital device yeah. that it'd be like, all right, morning. Yeah. My devotions, it's like phone has to be on the other side of the house. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm so it speaks a little bit about my discipline. But <laughs> yeah. is that is that a just a habit you're able to just set it aside then? And I would say, I mean, some mornings are easier than others, obviously. Like, um, but yeah, I I mean I have all of my like Bibles and the books and the different like devotion options next to me. And so it's yeah, it's kind of just a nope, this is what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know. And I mean, to me it's valuable enough. Like I I feel connected to God and his spirit, like because of it, that it's totally worth it to me. But, mm -hmm. but like I said, by no means am I perfect. There's some days where I'm like, oh my goodness, an hour has gone by and I've mm -hmm. told everybody my connection score, but I haven't like, <laughs> you know, like. I haven't connected with the one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's hit and miss, but yeah. yeah, for the most part, I try and be like, okay, like there's a sense of completion, you know, like, okay, it's done. You know, put it, it set it aside. Yeah, and, and that's the value of that that one right. ending game. It's not so. endless scrolling uh -huh. or mm -hmm. real watching or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. I think it comes back to just having a plan, and that's been mm -hmm. one of the encouragements that I've made in this Bible One Hundred One uh, class pro process that Jamie, you've been a part of yep. developing the curriculum mm -hmm. for and teaching uh, this last Sunday. Yeah. But just has been this: if you're going to read the Bible, you have to start with a plan. You can't just imagine that one day you're going to go from a non-Bible reader to a Bible reader yep. just because you want to be. Right. Like you got to sit down and actually say what am I going to read, where I'm going to read it, and how I'm going to prevent distractions from pulling me away. Mm -hmm. And that's just a good assessment process as you go through too. Like I have been reading the Bible my whole life, but how can I improve? Yep. And mm -hmm. some intentional reflection mm -hmm. is going to go a long way. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so, true. That's um, true. Yep. Digital devices. So what's the latest word from Andrew Murray? That's the one that's oh, rolling my goodness. Well, Nagin. today was. Um, by the Holy Spirit was the name of the title. I think it's like 16 or 17, something okay. like that. Um, just this idea that so often as believers, we have to um, know the truth before we feel the truth. Sure. And when it comes to the Spirit, it's actually kind of the opposite because he applies the gospel to us. Mm -hmm. So when we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives and hearts it's it's more of an experience and we may not understand how he's working but just trusting sure. that he is working mm -hmm. i guess mm -hmm. so it was a very new idea to me i mm -hmm. guess so i'm still kind of i probably will right. need to read it again for somebody that is like yeah that's a mind right thing. like it's i take thinker. the truth and then yeah. i apply you know yeah. i apply it but the right. fact that like the holy spirit is doing that all the time if i invite yeah. him to and yeah. and be attentive and yeah. responsive to yeah. him so yeah, so, yeah. It's good. So good. Mm -hmm. Was it a first reading or? Yes. It, okay. Yeah. That's so, what I'm saying. I need to, <laughs> I need to read it. Brings and, then yes. it. Yeah. and maybe write about it a little bit too. Yeah. That always seems to yeah. kind of clarify things yeah. for me. So yeah. But good stuff. Anyway. Yeah. It's good. Cool. All right. Well, hey. hey uh, Sunday. Continuing. Happened. Yeah. Continuing in our sermon series, uh, the fill in the blank church. Mm -hmm. This was the ministering church. And last week was the devoted church. Here's mm -hmm. what happened is I lost my journal. Oops, last Sunday, right before I was going to take a week off and have all this time to journal, <laughs> I left it behind somewhere, and I came back to church like Monday and Tuesday to look for it and scavenge, and I didn't find it. And then oh, my no. first day back, it was on the work table. You found it. Huh. I found it. But I now I have notes in two different places, which is why I like to have a journal with me, because it keeps my notes in the same place. So question for you, Whitney. Yo. Praxis, theology, was that... Was that God's design? I was right there with you. <laughs> so, I was like, he just didn't want you to have it for that. Yeah, it just, didn't, it just I mean, needed to be without. How, how, do we, how do we approach that? Was, did he want you to not have your journal? So, I mean, that's just fascinating timing. It is fascinating timing. I don't know. I was moving pretty quick last Sunday, and that's just life. And I have been trying to, like, consciously move slower, and I wasn't. So, is this a just lesson for me is it yeah. is it you know i don't know that, that's that's how all of those things can go right mm -hmm. like is it that god didn't want you to have your journal does god care if you had your journal right does he want you to have your journal because you wanted to have it but did he also see value in you learning a lesson through right. this right so, or did he want to interact with you in a different way last week right or i think the answer is yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it like, also <laughs> doesn't matter does it matter i don't know if it matters no. does it matter that's I asked first. <laughs> I think that's a good, 
I, I mean, I think, yeah, I, I don't want to put my pl- myself in the place of like what God did, saying what God did because I know what God did. I don't know. I know, mm-hmm. like I can tell you what the week was. It, yeah, I did interact with him in a very different way and in a way that I've been like longing to for a long time and, and haven't made the space for. So mm-hmm. is that because I had a week off and had the space and didn't have the my family around? Is it because I didn't have my journal? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It comes back to this concept of like God is working. Yeah. Yeah. And he's doing stuff. Right. And maybe it's not our job to figure out exactly how. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's what kind of what you're getting at with like, does it matter? Right. Right. Because exactly. it wasn't like you were like, I don't have my journal, I'm just gonna forget about God for the week. Right. You know, I mean right. it was what are other ways or yeah, how can I still And it's not a holy and, grail that I'm carrying around. Yeah. It's just a space where hmm. I connect with God sometimes and not very not as often as I want to. It's where I have my Sunday morning notes. Yeah. So here's yeah. the distinction I'm going to draw is because Paul Miller's prayer cards, which has been a constant Love process, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a reflective piece in that where we look for God's explicit movement in yeah. response to our prayers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we should probably separate that from looking for God's implicit movement sure. in things that might have happened in and throughout the sure. course of our lives. Hmm. Where like, did God adjust? Who knows? Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. We know that God's moving implicitly. We can trust that he has plans that he is going to bring to fruition in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, if Losing that journal had been an answer to a prayer. We could have said that's an explicit work mm, of God. Right. Um, but we can hold both up and stop looking for the implicit ones, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there, there's some there synthesis. Yeah. Oh, okay. Whew, we wrapped that one up in a bow. <laughs> Solved one problem. <laughs> On to the ministering church. Ministering church. <laughs> thoughts, and thoughts, takeaways. Three. I love that John gave a definition. What is it like? Mm. Uh, especially the story of like, when did you call feel called to ministry? Yeah. It's like the thing that's going through my mind is, aren't we all called the ministry? And when he said ministering is meeting a need through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's the what needs all believers of others through the power of the Holy Spirit. are called to do. Mm-hmm. I love that piece mm-hmm. of like, we're all ministers. And back to mm-hmm. kind of even we, we had the conversation before the podcast is, what do people come to Discover Woodlands for? And what are we, mm-hmm. how do we structure that in the best way for the people that are coming? And they come and meet staff. And it's like, no, Woodlands Church isn't the staff. Woodlands Church Amen. is the people, right? It's like the like everybody's here is called to minister and meet needs through the power of the Holy Spirit. I love that distinction this mm-hmm. Sunday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a really good follow-up word. Even as Whitney, you and I are going to be stepping into the kind of a leadership team meeting later, where Discover Woodlands is probably going to come up. Mm-hmm. That word, Jamie, that you just shared, that distinction bridging between what Sunday was and what Discover Woodlands needs to be is a mm-hmm. really, really good yeah. distinction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's good. really healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think for me, and it came to, so he gave five points. Yeah. Um, but I think the first one was really, I mean, so it was ministry is in the rhythm of your life. Um, and so he talked a lot about like how ministry is a posture and not a program. So it's mm-hmm. not like, I mean, it's intentional, but it's more of like, kind of comes out of like who we are and what we're already doing. Mm-hmm. Um that was helpful rather than being like, okay, like I have to go like do ministry now, but it was like a part of life. So Mm -hmm. if I have young kids and there's trick or treating, I'm going to take it an opportunity to meet my neighbors, Mm -hmm. you know, or if I work at X place, you know, like, like that's my, my mission field Mm -hmm. kind of a thing. So Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just like looking at the parts of your life that already exist. I mean, and the point from the, from the scripture was that Peter and John were going up, to the temple at the hour of prayer. Mm -hmm. It was a part of their regular rhythm of Mm -hmm. life when they encountered this man. It wasn't like, hey, we're going to make a beeline over to this place we've never been. And I mean, that's, there's a place for that. But everyday ministry kind of happens as life comes to us. And so having eyes to see that and then boldness to step into that. And I even love at the end, he, he wrapped it up at the end of the, I was at the 1045, 10 whatever service. 1030. 1030, yeah. 1030 <laughs> usually. Yeah. Um, that he kind of came back around and said, hey, Peter and John have, this is probably the third time they've walked oh, to yeah. prayer that that day. This beggar has been there his entire life from birth. He's been, he's been lame. So mm. how many times did they walk past this man and not minister to him? And it, it was one of these like, Never too late. It's never too yeah. late. And there's like this lifting of shame and guilt that you feel like you haven't done something yet. Mm. Well, don't let that weigh you down from the next time you walk past them. Right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's never too late was his his word and that and it and do we have the posture of being ready to meet needs? Yeah. I think God can be working in that all the time in us. Mm-hmm. Um mm. and then it yeah. What comes about is a man that's 
healed, well, I, jumping around and praising God. I, I think that that flows out of something you said too, that, that ministry flows out of who we are yeah. mm-hmm. rather than it's an externally placed upon expectation. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a thing that a lot of people wrestle with probably mm-hmm. in the church is they feel like mm-hmm. I'm just trying to scrape by. I'm just, I'm breaking my back, just doing day-to-day life. And then yeah. I come to church and I hear about all the things I have to do extra, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. feels like an external weight. And it, it's no slow down, like yeah. back it up. Your, your responsibility is to be faithful. Mm-hmm. And so just lean into that. Mm-hmm. And where God will use your faithfulness and naturally in the lives of others is where you need to be ministering. Mm-hmm. But it's not an external expectation or a checklist. You know, Peter and John, I don't think felt that. They didn't mm-hmm. feel that day. Yeah. They're like, mm-hmm. okay, how, fine mm-hmm. church. You know, We went to church again <laughs> and heard about how we have to heal the sick. And we're going to go out and look for that. It was yeah. exactly what you're just saying. It's just mm-hmm. like that day happened to be that as mm-hmm. they lived their lives. Right. Um, well, and even in that too, I mean, like Woodlands provides lots of serving opportunities and that's great. But ministry can be a conversation you have with your neighbor over the fence. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, so just kind of expanding. Mr. Wilson? Yeah, exactly. I was totally thinking of home improvements. Uh, John, my, my neighbor, John Timmy, oh, yeah. will come up to the fence often. <laughs> and he just like, I'm like, I know your face, John. <laughs> <laughs> but just this idea, yeah. I mean, it kind of expand. That's yeah. It is helpful that John gave that definition of ministry is yeah. that it, you know, it could be, I don't know, to your spouse, to a kid, to, mm-hmm. you know, to someone that's doesn't know anything about woodlands or I mean so yes it can be coming and preparing a trunk for trunk or treat but it Mm -hmm. can also be just yeah part of your regular Mm -hmm. what do you encounter who you encounter yeah I loved even this Sunday was a preteen preview so if you're there on Sunday and you see that like the front row is empty and like nobody can sit there it's because they're saving them reserving them for the fifth and sixth graders to come down and just be a part of the big church Mm -hmm. and John spoke directly to them Mm. in that in that I think it was the first point I had sort of have it like arrowed to in my notes of it, like if you are you in elementary school and you are saved by grace sure you're called connect. to ministry yeah. right mm-hmm. like you're called to minister where you are you are like just walk in your shoes yeah with the power of the holy spirit have him open your eyes to meet needs it was just like i like that that's my you know so if he was in the nursery not there but <laughs> you could be taking, talking to my elementary school teacher or not teacher student too mm-hmm. of it is just an outflowing of who you are. Mm-hmm. It's not a, you well, don't need to be an adult and have this figured out to minister either. <laughs> like we have we it don't. figured out. <laughs> but even like the perfection piece too, yes. of like as you're being perfected, as you're being sanctified, like yeah. that's what people in your life need to see too, because yeah. it's not this hope that I'm going to, well, I, I could never go to church because I'm not perfect. And it's like, well, you know, neither am I, but like right. in this process of growing in Christ likeness, like, look at me, see me, you know, mm-hmm. and, and have hope that, you know, you can be a part of this too, you mm-hmm. know, through God's spirit and mm-hmm. through the gospel. And yeah. Mm-hmm. So is there a practical distinction in the church between ministering and serving? Um, where, whereas mm. I can, I can see like, you can serve at the coffee bar without mm-hmm. ministering. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. you can not engage in people's lives by the power of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. um, pretty mm-hmm. easily, but you're actually still meeting a felt need yeah. in providing coffee. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a loosely it's felt like, need, um, but you're phrase, still serving, right? We have this phrase in this Winston family: "Want and need are like needs." A funny word. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. But it, anyway, it is so. It, mm-hmm. But e- there's lots of areas that you could probably serve in the church mm-hmm. without actually that's ministering. Okay. Yeah, well, question. but I would say filling a cup of coffee for someone and making them feel welcome is ministry. It's not like you're hearing their it like could story, be. Could but be. it doesn't it could have be. to. It could yeah, be. It doesn't true. have to be. Yeah. And that's I mean, kind it's of hard engagement or Yeah. And there's so, lots of areas obviously you can minister without serving. That that's what we were just talking about, yeah. you know, talking to Sophie or, you know, yeah. having a conversation where you're hmm. ministering hmm. without serving. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's an unhelpful or unnecessary distinction, but mm-hmm. it seems to be two hmm. different things that that we would love to the how how am I thinking wed more and more yeah. right you'd yeah. always want people who are serving to be ministering right I think it I think it's helpful in the fact that we talk about serving and how is that different from ministry we talk we say we, we use the words ministry and we use now ministering and we talk about serving is there a distinction and you can do one without the other yeah at least you can serve without ministering we, we our hope is that you don't yeah yeah right? And that's probably just a helpful word, even as I'm reflecting on things like serving basics. You yeah. know, what does it look mm-hmm. like to, to make sure that these things are, we use a lot of the language of fourth place and, you know, that's just the way yeah. I like it, but also to say, well, what does it mean to minister in, mm-hmm. in this context? And 
Mm-hmm. Um, how do we avoid the pitfall of, yeah, meeting a need without? Yeah, or completing a task. You know, yeah, kind of a thing. it's not task based. Yeah. yeah, but tasks still have to get completed. That's right. part of it too. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I think of like ushering or even some of like our outdoor mm-hmm. greeters that open doors for people or spread salt, and it's like, gosh, that's important that they do that. But to have the the heart of a minister would be, I don't know, maybe you're praying for people in your mind as they mm-hmm. come through or mm-hmm. something, you know, mm-hmm. that's, you know, if you're an usher, like, you know, who do I need to smile at? You yeah. know, yeah. I don't know. It's I had this interesting conversation with Sophie um, this past week. So her, she's, uh, she had an incredible gym teacher come like in her second grade year and she had her for second, third, fourth, fifth grade year. She had to leave her in-laws are, are ailing and she, they left to go be with closer to them. Hmm. And, um, has a good has has a has a good gym teacher now, but this one was just like one of those. Nobody's gonna ever live up to Miss Munoz, hmm. um, and Miss Munoz was in that second grade year. I think we uh, couldn't have been. It was COVID. It maybe could have been. Any, it doesn't matter. Um, we were going for parent teacher conferences, and you know, you usually just go to like the main teacher, and you don't hit all the extra. I don't hit the art teacher, the extra gym teacher, yeah, or the, <laughs> music yeah. teacher. Do some people? I hope so I've been going to parent-teacher conferences <laughs> for like eight years, I and think, I've never have I never even thought of it. Ms. Munoz wanted to, okay. wanted people to come, right. and I'm not sure if there's an expectation there or not, but she met us in the hallway, and as we were walking out, and she's like, hey, just want to say, you know, love having Sophie and Jim and whatever, and then she looked at Sophie, and she goes, and I know that there's a light that's shining in you, Aww. and the same light shines in me. Let's shine really bright here at, at McDill. Like, that's, like, wow. she's a believer, um, and then, even, yeah, eventually she's— in another conversation, she's like, I love Jesus and I pray for this place the whole time. And so Sophie's really missing her. She mm. was a coach to her. She was also her gym teacher. She was just involved. But and I asked Sophie, why do you why are you missing her? And she said, Because every I don't know, Mom. I just every time she saw people, she she saw them and said their name. She knew people. Mm. And I was like, Oh, that made you feel known and loved, right? And she's like, Yeah, yeah, I missed that. And I was like, Well, you can miss that. That's totally fine. Yeah. But also like you loved her and and you want to like she's someone to emulate she was a she was a mm. lover of Jesus and she brought that into her everyday work mm. how did how can you emulate that mm. how can you follow her as she follows Christ and she's like oh i can just look at people and like wow. say their names <laughs> and make them know you know like so yeah. back to kind of this spreading ice or opening the door yeah. um we should have a name tag sunday Yes, hmm. we've talked. Full we talk- circle to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but that Miss Munoz was Munoz, minis- yep. ministering. Yeah, right? she was in the course totally of her, was. and and then you follow that up by ministering yeah. to your daughter yeah. by contextualizing or hel- mm. helping kind yeah. of add some aspects to that, which is a good like planted seed, water seed, you yeah. know, mm. sort of situation yeah. in terms of mm. that discipleship element in Sophie's life there. Yeah. So mm. that's a that's a great picture of what it means to be part of. The church, too, mm-hmm. because I doubt she went to Woodlands, right? No, or, she didn't. She lived yeah. up in Mosinee and had a church up there. So what, yeah. a, what a cool mm-hmm. picture yeah. of what that is. But mm-hmm. even in this, within this story, Paul and John are walking past the guy, and they say, look at us. Like that, that idea of looking and seeing somebody, mm-hmm. like enough, if you say somebody's name, you had to look at them enough to know who it was. To recognize them. Yeah. Or to, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a very small offshoot, but we yeah. don't need to follow that too far. Yeah. But yeah. I think the other big thing that John really hit kind of at the end was just the idea too. So ministry is uh, being ready to witness and then inviting them into something beautiful. So he talked quite a bit about the gospel and it's not mm-hmm. just like loving people for, for love's sake, but that, you know, there's a reason, I guess, mm-hmm. that we that we share mm-hmm. what we do. And mm-hmm. so even like thinking about your story with, Miss Munoz. Munoz. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's a lot of vowels. There. I think there's. <laughs> it's she's got the little tilde the, the, over the, the end. Yes. Munoz. And, and Munoz. Munoz. Um, but I mean, for her to say to Sophie, like, you know, I see this light in you, and and mm-hmm. I have it too. Like, I mean, that's kind of like a an identification of like, yeah, like it's because of Jesus, or yes. it's you, you know, yep. I mean, it's and so that's such a sweet piece of that too, and yeah. so. So yeah, like I, I guess the the challenge maybe is is there somebody in your life or some situation where you've been ministering or either having conversations and like you need to be bold and say yeah. you know I don't know hey do you know Jesus or yeah. well, you know like oh to man introduce mm. hope I, that's hope. a reminder yeah that's a reminder too of like 
props to you for Sophie. And mm. props to Sophie for shining her light in such a way mm. that another oh, yeah. believer could see it. Like that's grader, beautiful. Grader, mm-hmm. whatever, yeah. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite stories, uh, you know, the ichthus. That's one of those like, I had such a hard time sending Sophie to school. Mm. Like I, I mm. did not when kindergarten. I was a wreck. I remember coming in on 4K, like the first day of 4K, and we that's when we had staff prayer at 9 a.m. And I walked in, and Rick looked at me. He's like, "What's wrong with you?" And I just like. Eh, it's 4K. It's school started, and he was just like, "Oh, wait, give you a huge yeah. hug," and that just made it worse. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Rick. <laughs> when somebody cares, you know, like yeah. it just that kind of the tipping point. But I have written in, in a journal a long time ago, like, God, if this is the if this is what you're calling us to, like, let her be a light where she is. Yeah. And, and then at the end of that year, the teacher was like, "Man, she's a light here." Has no idea what that means to us because she's not a believer. Mm. And so there's just been this like. Cool. Do you write that on your prayer card? It's a prayer yeah, card story, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a prayer card story. It's an yeah. explicit answer to prayer that God has been just kind of saying, well, I got her. It's okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, so, I, but I cut you off. You no, no, but that, that, that even goes back just as a parent and it's just the wrestling with like, yes, my kid can be a light, but is that what I should expect of them in mm-hmm. kindergarten? Mm-hmm. In, and to an extent, yes, but like what's the... It's just such a wrestling, mm-hmm. right? And so mm-hmm. I, I just affirm that wrestling. Mm-hmm. It is not a faithless decision to <laughs> make right. a wise choice for your kids um, in terms of where they go to school mm-hmm. or right. where they spend time or are influenced by or things mm-hmm. like that. So, mm-hmm. which is good. Um, but just a really cool church history story. The ichthus, you know, the fish that goes yeah. on everyone's car. Mm-hmm. Um, it originated when uh, Christian persecution was at its highest. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. because what it is, if you think about it, it's two like half circles. Mm-hmm. And so what could happen in a meeting on a dusty street in Ephesus or something like that, uh, Philippi, a, a persecuted area was while you were in conversation with someone you just met is you can make that half circle with your foot. Oh, and sure. if they were a believer and understood the symbol, they would complete the symbol. Hmm. So an hmm. ichthus spells out Jesus Christ, son of God, savior. Yeah. That's the the Greek letters, Jesus Christus, uh, huios, theos. Yeah. Salvus or whatever. Um, everyone followed that. Yeah. Something close. That I kind of did. That I was, was relatively sort of, correct. Sort of that was relatively that's correct. When you, that's so. when you slow down the recording and you really hear not, not <laughs> because, one extra. No, two I X, hope Elizabeth X. Smith doesn't listen to this because she's so stinking good at Greek and um, she will probably email me and let me know how poorly I did at that. Um, but the different <laughs> letters spell out Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. So, um, and then you scribble that out with your foot, um, which mm-hmm. is cool. Hmm. But um, it was just even in the early church, there was this way of signaling, I, I'm in Christ, you're in Christ. Christ, mm-hmm. just in a physical representation in a mm-hmm. safe way at that point because mm-hmm. it was punishable by death. Um, but I just love that that mm-hmm. was seen by mm-hmm. Sophie. And I think that in our workplaces too, finding, oh, yeah. you know, just our, our people, not that, it's a, not that it's persecuted in that same way, but just to say, how can we be lights together? Mm-hmm. Um, how can we encourage one another? Mm-hmm. How can we meet and pray for one another um, in this place uh, for, for the sake of ministry? Mm-hmm. Um, for the sake of letting That's our lights good. shine, mm-hmm. which is really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and it just was who she was. I kind of yeah. falling back to that. It wasn't. It wasn't this external right. Act. Put on things. Go through training just, to like who yeah. she was. Yeah, in second grade, you don't really yeah. carry that. You just you're you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, I'm saying Miss Munoz, like her oh. Sophie. You know, trying yeah. to follow Miss Munoz. It was who Miss Munoz was. But then now there is a there is a like trying it on for Sophie as well. It's yeah. that interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. What comes first? I don't know. Super cool. Well, hey, let's uh, let's do a random question. Mm-hmm. So let's wrap this oh, up. So, but the other thing is the hashtag. We're not a cruise ship. Yeah, I was just going to say there was a cruise ship battleship, battleship. idea. Yeah, which just is, the idea of like engaging rather than yeah. coming as a, not, a consumer. Don't come get yeah. Or, yeah, and yeah. eat a bunch of food. But yeah. actually, we're on a mission. We have a purpose. Yeah, yeah. It was a good, good. very good analogy. The church. Mm-hmm. Putting things in the show notes. Show notes, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> All right, spinner, spinner, spinner time. Oh, it's going to be Whitney. It always is when I'm here. I turned down the blue. It's Whitney. So that's okay. <laughs> it's Whitney? <laughs> yeah. Jamie. All right. I, just, <laughs> I manifested. I don't know if that's, <laughs> if that's legal to say that on this podcast, but. <laughs> it works. It's good. It's good. All right. I don't know why I still hold this up. <laughs> Disclaimer, I don't believe that. I just, so, uh, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's all right. <laughs> uh, what do you miss about kindergarten? Oh gosh! Sorry. Okay, <laughs> I know what my answer is, but go for it. 
It was I no. Have to go first. Yeah, yeah. Do you, it that's was what you, the yours. spinner said. That's the point. My, the spinner. So my aunt was my that's kindergarten fun. teacher, but they got married the year that I was in there. So she was dating my uncle. Oh, that's fun. And then got married to my uncle oh, cool. the year that I was there. Oh wow! So it was great having my aunt as my kindergarten teacher. But I also really, we had this like tucked away cubby area. We would go every morning for like doing the weather chart. I love the weather chart. <laughs> you miss the weather chart. <laughs> and, and like putting the number in, you That's know. Funny. Oh, that was fun. Oh, and there was a kitchen area. There was, she had an awesome, yeah, I loved kindergarten. Kindergarten was great to me. Yeah. The bookshelf area where you could go oh, pick yeah. out any book and like just spend 20 mm-hmm. minutes just looking through books. What a dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm old enough to say this. Mm-hmm. But I am almost convinced that I got my mouth washed out with soap. In, <laughs> in, in the classroom? Or, yeah, by oh, the teacher. Really? By the teacher. And the teacher like, was old school. Like She yeah, was retired a couple like years it. after. Jeez. Like She was lived her life. Um, <laughs> but I, I had that memory. And then I'm like, I don't. I can't be that old. Like I'm, I know I'm not mm. that old. Like get out the ruler, so, kind of that like was a, yeah, but, that was a thing, though. I remember yeah. that being threatened as a, like an okay. elementary. Yeah, that school. would be really? early early mm-hmm. 90s. Mm-hmm. So. All right. So maybe like at my house, but I don't know that at school. But anyway, my mom can confirm or deny. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know that her memories are always so great about those eight. Like I don't know if she remembers yeah. all that. So for but, me, it was snack time and oh, the milk break. Sure, we didn't have that in first grade. Chocolate oh, they got milk, rid of it. They got rid of it. Yeah. Curtain. Yep. Wow. And I, so I can remember it was one of like I loved like the whatever the chore charts or the chore wheel and so like mm-hmm. every week you got to like have a different line leader and you know all these yep. different things oh yeah but the the milk go to get her person or whatever yeah. you know like yeah. you'd carry the milk cart back to the class and i remember that was, that. That was an empowering little job yeah. there yeah i mean they were really working on it there mm-hmm. like hey we're a team we work together here yeah and we all have different roles to yeah f- to play mm-hmm. but yeah i just i remember that not happening in any of the later grades do y'all do half day or full day kindergarten Oh, good full question. Day. I'm pretty sure I was half day. I think I was too. Yeah. I don't think, I think that was the only even. option. I mean, I went to a small elementary school. I think it school, changed so. like right after maybe I was in half day hmm. kindergarten. I don't remember. I just remember A days and B days. So oh, I'm sure. it was definitely half day because when I would get off the bus to go to the sitter for the afternoon, she would make these, you know, ham and cheese loaf, like the mm-hmm. most gross lunch meat ever on like really white bread yeah. <laughs> and then sour cream and onion chips oh jeez oh that was the best part of kindergarten I love that sour cream and onion forget the weather station <laughs> forget the weather station that was Such, so terrible but yeah there was a memories. there was a bully in my kindergarten class oh no so yeah there were actually two was so this, I have some pretty you, was it? no okay. I have some pretty traumatic memories um uh-huh. so but one, one of the kids uh, tried to stuff a you remember those cardboard bricks yeah oh yeah so oh, yeah. yeah he tried to stuff one down the toilet <laughs> clogged the toilet up overflowed huge mess that didn't uh, overrun with your almost retired teacher no i think i oh, think right. my class probably pushed her a little yeah. bit so um but i i should shout out uh my mom did get me a birthday uh gift of <gasps> a new tea kettle Oh. So, because I apparently have complained about the <laughs> slowness of, we have a very nice pour over kettle yeah. in my house, but it's been slow for tea um, where you just need to dump the hot water in sure. and not just like slowly pour this it. This one's got so, a big nozzle then. A big nozzle, mm. big, big thing, fills fast. It's got some, some LED lights, which I don't wow. think my wife loves on our counter, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is my tea kettle. It's a good, it's a good deal. Yeah. So, there you go. um, so thank you, mom, for mm-hmm. that gift. Um, I'm going to lean into that with my morning, beautiful mug there you um, go. in the evening. In the so, evening. There you yeah. go. So nice. Right. Happy belated birthday to you. Well, thank you. And happy early birthday to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's coming yeah, up. You guys it's are coming up. swinging. There's a lot of birthdays happening it right is. here. Yeah. Birthday time. It's time. Birthday it's time. Good. So. Mm-hmm. Good. Well, hey, this has been Cabin Conversations. Thanks for uh, joining us. We'll be we will be back next week unless some of us take off vacation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. See you later.